so hey guys um i was just chilling and thinking about what i'm going to eat for dessert and i totally forgot to film an intro i did everything else and forgot to film the intro so um yeah if you guys are interested in this icy blue look i did like a um deeper blue on the outside with a baby blue you know iced blue look for the winter time you know it's cold out might as well ice the eyes out too you know but i just added in a little fun spunky little looking funky space bun thing that's hair's totally up to you i just thought it kind of you know was a cute little vibe with the you know little snow bunny look so um yeah if you're interested in this makeup tutorial um with these blue eyes it's actually coming up right now so just stay tuned and i'll see you in a second all right guys so hey it's me back in the most rare form you've ever seen i always feel so funny when i recreate a video like damn my hair is everywhere too but that's besides the point. I like to like put a headband on to pull the hair back when I'm doing all my makeup and then we'll let it down at the end. But I mean, I, I really enjoyed doing this blue eyeshadow tutorial. I had this bright blue shirt and I never thought anything matched with it until I got all my colors out and started playing with it. So if you're having trouble trying to find like a, a pop and blue look, you know, I did a very nude lip and you know an iridescent highlighter one of those like i don't know the undertone they look white this is the one i use they look white but they have reflex of like the rainbow in them so it's almost like holographic it's really pretty and i just stuck to a nude lip so that way the main attraction would be the eye um so yeah I'm gonna show you the first thing that I did and all the palettes that I used. There are three involved. You could probably do it with just one palette, but I'm freaking picky, so. All right, um, oh my gosh. You should see this table right next to me. Some shade broke out of one palette and all this red powder, it's all over my table. Where the heck did that even come from? I don't know. Hope it's not my brushes. But anyway, so the first shade that I took, I used a Profusion palette. This is the Festival palette. And the first, first shade I used was this very like teal blue, kind of like a, I'm trying to think of the right word, you know, like a pastel blue, pastel teal, I guess I would say. And, um, I decided to run that in my crease for the first color that we lay down. And this actually had like a little bit of pigment to it. And I was kind of surprised because usually pastel colors on me, unless if I lay down like concealer and I don't set it with a powder, that's the only way it's really going to show up on my eyes. So I was pretty shocked. I mean, in those Profusion palettes, like I said, $12.99. $12.99 from freaking Walmart. And they work just like, they remind me of Morphe. The layout, however many shades you get, you know, the shimmers, the glitters, and then like the mattes in there. You got a little mixture of everything. So I laid down that pastel blue first. Then with another crease blending brush, just a tiny bit smaller, this is just an e.l.f. crease blending brush, I went right down to the blue that's right here, this really, really bright blue. Rub my brush in there, and I kind of got it on the bottom, like I usually do, right on the tip and right on the bottom. And uh, let me grab my mirror so I don't go out of view. And as I did this, I kind of just like stamped it across a little bit and I am going to work on just blending this blue out and once this blue gets blended we've got just a few more blues um, and I pop the concealer in the middle of my eyes to add that baby blue effect right in the center so I'm gonna build this to like 
where I like it and where it's blended out enough. And then I'll be right back to show you the next blues that I'm gonna use. All right, once I finished blending out that shade to what I liked, it's not gonna, I, these shadows right here and right here, they're not actually on my face. I think they're caused by the lighting on the side that I just added to get that extra brightness on my face. But like if I move like up close, like you can tell that shadow, like they're gone. I just wanna let you know that that's not like brown makeup up in there. But I'm grabbing my NYX Ultimate Brights palette again. And remember how I told you these blues are blue. Like they show up blue, 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 girl. And this blue, I like checked it out and I was like, whoa, that is literally like, you can tell I was swatching. But that is literally like the blue that my shirt is right here, that one. So I decided to take my crease brush from Morphe. This is just a little bit tinier than the brushes that we were using, a little bit slimmer, I guess you could say. And then um, I always tap off the blues. I do not want fallout on my face because it's already done on this side, not this side yet. I'm going to show you how I finish this side, but... Still, getting blues on your eyes and then down your face, it ruins the whole look. It can be a bitch to get off. So, uh, like I said, I have it on the side, right on the tip. So, I'm just going to kind of tap this color on that outer corner right there. And I like to do like a line starting my way up to where I can get that little bit of outer corner going on and then I use the shades that are that I put in the middle of the brush and I kind of just slowly start bringing that over to the other side of my lid and the key with blues I mean blues purples um, I know that they're some of the hardest eyeshadows to make just from watching other YouTubers and learning about how they create shadows, um, you know, even some deep greens, but blues and pinks can be like a bitch to make. So for NYX to come out with a palette that has a blue in there that, you know, is this good, I mean, you got to give them props, you know? But, uh, yeah, I take it all the way into the inner corner like I usually do. Look the other way. And then I go up and down really, really lightly right in that inside crease corner area. And then if you want that outside triangle, this is when I start to create that outside cat effect just a little bit. I mean, we're definitely going to deepen it up, you know, with some other colors, but this first shade is what really kicks off the look and gets the blue really starting to pick up to what we like. So I'm literally just going to take that blue right here and do that same thing and add about another layer. And then I'll be back for the darkest blues as soon as I add on another layer of that first blue shade right there. All right, now remember when I said you could do this eye look with only one palette? I meant the James Charles palette because he has one, two, three, four, all of these four blues, I could have mixed and matched, made the perfect shade. However, this blue and this blue, or like mixed together, are almost identical to this one, so. I'm just going to go into this one on the side of the brush and this one, tiny little bit in the middle, um, dust that off a little bit, and then you'll have your brush looking a little bit darker blue, just like that. So um, I'm going to take this, the deepest blue that we're going to be using tap that one over top of the outer corner as you can tell we're sticking to like a pattern here we're doing the same exact thing with all of the shades only we're keeping each one just a tad bit lower than the one that we did before it it's like i'm not going up as high as that baby blue 
Um, and this blue is pretty much, <laughs> this blue is really spot on with the look that I'm trying to create. Sorry if I lean over here. I'm just grabbing more out of, uh, out of the pan. And um, I'm literally just going to build that up to the intensity that I like it to be. And sometimes I like to open my eye, like I said before. And this will really help straighten that out. And also in that inner corner, you know, you get to figure out where you want it to go. And what I usually do, I know they say it's not the best. I do pull my eye a little bit taut. And I go right back in here, just wiggling this brush back and forth on that eyelid and swirling it in circles, really blending it in that uh, inner corner. And it doesn't matter what your crease looks like right there. Um, I'm going to pick up just a little tiny brush or sponge, whatever you have on you. I had a little bit of fallout right there, but it's already gone. Thank you. God, because blue is, who blue is a, you already know, I already said it, just remember blue is a bitch to get off. So, the last thing that I did in this palette, you can't really tell from too far away, but this blue right here is actually a shimmer, it's not a matte shade. So, I take my pointer finger, and I'm like rubbing it pretty hard, like I'm I'm getting in there. I'm getting in there and I'm getting aggressive, you know? And it's going to look just like that, minus the fuzzy. <laughs> but it's going to look just like that blue. This is, it's beautiful. And um, let me grab my little mirror again. I always use this now, so I'm never out of focus so you guys can see. And um, I literally, I'll close my eye and I will put that blue right in the very, very center of my eye and drag it across the entire eyelid. So that way the entire eyelid is gonna be that blue, deep blue shimmer shade. Let me get some on my left hand so I can show you this a little bit better because I am missing some spots right in there. It's a little bit patchy. So I like to just press at first and then I will rub it once it's on. Once it's already on the eye, then you can rub. So just like that, which actually that's totally fine if that middle shade is a little bit lighter because we're gonna be making it a crap ton brighter in a second with this baby blue shade. So I'm just gonna grab this loose, powder brush. Actually, do I have a smaller one out here? I don't think I have my smaller one out. Um, here it is. Okay, so I'm just going to go into any translucent powder that you have. This one is from Wet n Wild, so I kind of have to like smack it to get it out. I was using a mixture of that one with my um, Maybelline Fit Me powder. I love both of them, but yeah, I was using that to just like go under the eye and really sweep away any fallout just like that. And you're also kind of building like a barrier to that blue, you know what I mean? And just kind of flicking it upward. All right, so do it to the other eye as well. Anything I do to one eye, I always have to do it to the other eye just to even it out. Call me OCD, cause I am. <laughs> All right, final step in the look. Not final, but oh my gosh, my hands. I'm gonna clean my hands off and then we're gonna complete the look with this inner highlight, a little spotlight. And then what I decided to do on top to make it seemed more put together. All right, the next step you're gonna see me do is when I just take a little tiny bit of concealer and I put it right in the center of my eyelid. You never want to use too much. And then I'm going to take, remember that brush that I didn't know what its name was? I was trying to read it and it said precision brush. So 
I guess it's precision, but when you have this on, I always look up and around, and then you see that dot like up here. That's as high up as when you open your eye, you kind of want it to be. So what I like to do is just take a concealer brush and kind of, I won't go up all that way, but I will be bringing this concealer back and forth on the lid. And then as it is still sticky, this is important, you grab that James Charles palette, which is this one. And then this baby blue, it's like a iced out blue shade. It's so pretty. It's baby blue and shimmery. You can take any finger that you want, but I suggest using a finger. If you use a brush, you're not going to get the payoff of using it like that, like when it shows up on your finger. It's a little clumpy. All right, so I keep throwing my palettes over top of my mirror, sorry. All right, and then I literally just take it, and as the concealer is still sticky, this is what's gonna help hold this down, and this baby blue shade ain't gonna budge. Because I've tried to do a look with this baby blue all over my eye, and I had to like keep replying, reapplying and, and reapplying it all day. And I couldn't figure out why. And I really, I didn't have a base laid down. So I couldn't figure out why it was doing that. But that's why I didn't have a base laid down. All right. So the next step I'm going to do is go right into this deepest blue right here in the bottom of the James Charles palette. And what I do with this is I underline my waterline. So I'm just going to take it and I like to kind of stamp it at first. And then I go and once, you know, I know there's not going to be any fallout. That's when I will blend that color with this brush. Sometimes I squint, sometimes I don't. I don't know. All habit depends on what you like to do. And then I kind of like to bring it up just like that and connect that to that outer portion of the eye. And remember in this Wondrous palette, the Seascape palette, we had this blue and I never knew what to do with it. Now I know. So I'm gonna take this little guy again and I'm gonna go into this cause this is a shimmer. This is a shimmery shade, not super shimmery, but it's shimmery and it is the exact color of my shirt. So I'm going to take that one down just a tad bit lower than the one that we already have on there. Um, and this will make our lower lash line look a little bit thicker. Um, and it's also going to match better, you know. Um, but I really, really, really enjoyed that blue look. And then I also take my finger in it. Any finger will do to get that deep, deep blue. And then I pop it on my outer corner because I don't want the outer corner of my eye to lose any pigment. The outer part of your eye, like I've mentioned before, should always be the darkest part of your eye, should always be the darkest. And I'll take a tiny little bit more, a very tiny bit, and put it right on the center. I'll look that way when I put it on, and then I kind of rub it up and down a little bit. And just like that, we got it. And then I was like thinking as I'm doing this look, something looks off at the top. It didn't look totally blended, like it was cut off. So over here, I was like, what would look good with this blue? So I was like, you know what? I'm gonna take this orange shade up here, this bright orange. Don't even ask me why I thought of orange. I'm just weird. My light just went out and now it just came back on. Something's going on in here. Okay. And now it's off again. Give me one second. I got to get this light on. All right, guys. So I popped on my liner to equivalent that side. And I'm about to pop on my lash. But I was having a... The light just went off again. Something strange is going on in my room. See when this light is on? Like... I'm like banging the outlet trying to get the light to turn on. See when that light is on? It just adds so much more light to the look. I don't know why it's doing that, 
But anyway, when my lashes don't stick, I was having trouble with these lashes. So I will actually take, since I use the black glue, and I'll put about like five or six dots right on my lash line where I know I need that lash to really stick. And then I'll let it like rub out. Sorry, I had to click my low battery button. I'll let it, you know, I blow on it, wave on it, whatever you gotta do to let it get just a little bit tacky. But the eyelash itself is already tacky. It's been sitting out for like a minute. I actually picked these ones up today from Kiss. These are not Ardell um, Wispies like I'm used to. They're the Kiss lashes, which were even thinner. I thought they were beautiful, the way that they just flared and fluttered up at the end. Um, so yeah, let me grab my mirror because last time when I did my lashes, it was just a, a disgrace. All you guys saw was the top of my ponytail. It was that bad for an eyelash. All right, and then uh, once I have those spots just a little bit tacky, that lash is just going to adhere to it so much easier. That thing just went on like smooth as anything. And I didn't have any single problems with it, not even on the inner corner. These lashes, I actually have a pair of scissors out because I'm like, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but that's because the they were a little bit too long. So I just clipped off a little bit on the inside. Oh, I forgot to clip off some of the length, but you can't really tell. And then I went to my infamous Carly Bible um, mascara, which did I already put that back? It's not like me to put things back right away. Am I growing up? Oh my gosh. So then I took the L'Oreal Telescopic, and this is perfect for false lashes. Perfect. And I literally just ran it through the false lashes just like that, just so they stood out a little bit more than, you know, how I, how I bought them. Um, and that always helps, you know, when you go down low into your normal lash and kind of brush it up into the regular lash. And then you guys know me, like I was looking at my face and you know, what? I'm just gonna save that for later because <laughs> let me just get on with highlight. But uh, so for highlight, this one was from Wet n Wild, but it was like a special edition. It had like that skull on the front. It came out at like Halloween time, but I forget who had it. I think it was NYX. They had a highlight. It was called Cherry Snow. And it reminded me just like that. It's that iridescent holographic type of highlighter. Let's see. <laughs> hiccups. Jeez. So, yeah. I've been dealing with hiccups all day. Usually, I get them at night. Like, to the point where they freaking hurt. They hurt my freaking chest. I'm like, eh. <clears throat> like what kind of hiccup who am I like who hiccups like that a weirdo that's what kind and then I take the highlight and I also run it down just the bridge of the nose right on the tip the cupid's bow on the chin and then I already did that side of the forehead but it's starting to fade a little bit so I always go in like a boxy shape like I start from one side, I kind of lift it up a little bit, go over and then down. So it's just like a box, but it doesn't close right there. <laughs> and then I really just blend it out. You know, these iridescent highlighters are so easy to blend out. And then I just take my powder brush and I rub over everything that I have done, you know, down to the nose highlight, everything, everything that I've done. I just blend it out with this brush. And then what I was going to say before is, you know me. So I took my setting spray, which today I'm using the Wet n Wild, the natural finish one. And I just went all over. We didn't even do blush on this look. I think that just the bronzer is enough with the orange up there. If you really wanna make your eyes pop, it's enough, yes. Like I said, high class, totally using like makeup remover wipes to dry my face. But I don't want to dry it completely because 
I have a glitter like addiction and it's, it's not good. Um, but I found this one from NYX that is in silver, but you can see all the reflex in there. It's like pink, but green and blue. Definitely a lot of blue reflex. So right after I sprayed that, I, I mean, I'm not making this a glitter look, I promise. I took just a couple tiny little pieces of glitter, just like that. And then I put it right in the center where that baby blue, baby blue shade was. And I'm not making it, you know, a total glitter eyed look like you would think. I'm just keeping it very minimal. So at least when you're up close, you get like a tiny little, you know, you could see a couple specks of glitter, but it's not like a crazy glitter eye look. Um, I finished it off with mascara on the bottom row. All I got to do now is pull this bee's nest down and I'll be back with the completed look. One second. All right, guys. So I am back with the completed look. I decided to do just just some funky little space buns and, you know, half up, half down, had the rest of my hair down. If I was going out, I'd probably pop in like some studs or like some hoops, something like that. But um, up close, you know, you can definitely tell the baby blue that's in the center and then the outside and the inside are that like darker blue color. And then the orange I just used at the top just because I didn't have a color up there to like blend it into. So I always love orange and blue together. It was just, I don't know, just a vibe for me. So if you guys enjoyed this look, please give it a thumbs up because it really, really helps me out in the YouTube algorithm. Um, subscribe to my channel if you haven't. All you need to subscribe, uh, YouTube will just make you create your password. and well, I mean, create an email and then create your password. That's all you need. And then all you have to do is just hit like or subscribe if you want to join uh, Chase's channel. <laughs> and then there's a little bell that's at the bottom of YouTube. And if you click on the bell, it'll notify you on your phone every time I upload a new makeup look. So, um, yeah, please like, share, subscribe, or ring the bell if you're interested. Otherwise, other than that, thank you guys so much for watching. Um, I think this funky blue look with, like, it's more of, like, a sporty type of shirt, you know, with the space buns. It actually came out kind of cute. Like, I wish it wasn't, like, 11 o'clock at night and I could actually, like, go out because I kind of feel like I do my makeup just to, like, wash my face and go back to bed. I'm going to try and sleep in this ish tonight, you know? Shit. But anyway, I'll see you guys later. And thank you so much for watching. Um, it means a lot to me. Thank you, guys. I'll see you in the next video. Bye, guys.